unlucky there fellas that was a really great effort there away at Inter that was a really interesting game but we showed enough there I think we can take these guys at home the next match week okay so let's just pick our belief up we know that we can beat these guys we gave them a really good game there let's go back to Iceland and show them what we're all about and welcome to episode number 112 of Husavik Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode is a rematch from yesterday. This time we take on Inter Milan in Iceland and off the back of that we do have our end of season review because we're in Iceland. So if you are looking forward to today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but this is what the group does look like off the back of yesterday's episode. If you missed that one, two games in the group stage of the Champions League, I'll leave a link to that over in the top right corner. We started off with a nice 4-0 win at home against Partizan. Off the back of that, though, a very interesting to and fro game between us and Inter Milan in Italy. Unfortunately, we gave away a late penalty there, which they did slot away, which meant that they did pick up a 3-2 win, but as I said in the intro, encouraging signs. Unfortunately, though, Palazan did pick up a win against RB Leipzig, which does mean they are joint with us on three points, albeit we are above those guys, thanks to both head-to-head -head record and goal differential. So at the moment, we are in a Europa League knockout spot at the halfway stage of this Champions League group. But we're not going to cover off too many things before we do get into this game in today's episode, of course, with us only having played into Milan at the end of yesterday's episode one quick thing to cover off before we do get into the team sheets Frederick Larson is back from his injury Benjamin Rubio is not so keep that in mind we do show you guys the team sheets before we do crack into this game shortly but we'll get straight into it we'll come back shortly from the Laugardas Voller and hopefully take some points off into Milan here at home and here are the team sheets for this one we are up first as I said Frederick Larson does come back in for Chaka Traore at left wing, but otherwise it's the same lineup that we did start yesterday against Inter Milan away from home. They did a pretty good job there, still missing Benjamin Rubio, though hopefully that does not prove too costly. Fabio Maliano missing a golden chance in amongst those ones that we did have in this game. Yesterday, Inter Milan looking very similar to the team that we did take on there, and hopefully this time we can take some points off them. And nine minutes gone, we have the first highlight of this game, a free kick, Thiago Polo from a tight angle. Comes off the upright or the goalkeeper, not too sure, but nonetheless, into forced into a bit of a scrambling clearance, but the first chance, still nil all approaching the 15 minute mark. And all the way up to the 36 minute mark for our next highlights. So, so far, this has been a very quiet game, quite dissimilar to what we did have in yesterday's episode, but we are playing well so far. Great chance here for Mariano, but a good save there from the Inter Milan goalkeeper. They do look to play out from the back here do the Italian side, so a few good chances for us in the first 40 minutes, but it does remain nil all. And at the 40 minute mark, we do have another highlights of things starting to kick into gear here late in the first half. We do still look to be having the upper hand in this one so far. Some good short passing though, unfortunately. Giroud can't link up with anyone, but some good work there from Harwood to get the ball back for us. Zimmerman is slotted away there by Frederick Larson, just gets beyond the goalkeeper and puts that into the back of the net. And after a pretty good opening to this game, Stats-wise and highlight-wise, albeit not too many of them, we do grab a 1-0 lead here at home against Inter Milan. Frederick Larson made his way forward. Good ball there as Zimmerman was just getting in behind the defence. The goalkeeper comes out for it, doesn't quite get there. Zimmerman makes the most of it. 1-0 Volsunga late here in the first half. And not too long off the back of that opening goal for us, Inter Milan looked to get something going here down the other end. Aliyev tries to put a ball there into the mixer. Thiago Polo deals with it. And then someone clears it, but Fabio Maliano with a pretty poor header there, giving Inter Milan possession straight back. Ilyev, it's a dead set replica of the goal that we have just scored that is so poor by Fabio Maliano, had all the time in the world there to control possession, tried to head it back to one of our midfielders. No one was there, and from there it was a simple counter-attacking goal this to Inter Milan. Thomas Lamar slots through Ilyev, and much like down the other end, Hulu Lubit comes out for it. 
doesn't quite get there and that's a bit of a hammer blow that one we've been playing quite well so far in this first half but it is going to be one all as we do head into the shed you can see stats wise we certainly should probably be leading this game but that one good chance that we did give there to Inter Milan it did prove costly off the back of that I think we'll take Mariano off what we're going to do here is try Kalen Rakasan up front of course when we did bring him to the club he was a striker at Cluj so Anderson to come on for Mariano will make that switch and hopefully we can kick on in the second half and get our lead back as it is one all at half time. And we had to wait all the way up to the 63 minute mark for our first highlight here in the second half. We are in position, albeit a free kick deep inside our own half. We do play that up to Kalen Rakasan. It will be interesting to see what he offers up front for us in the second half of this game so far in the Champions League. Bagging a lot of assists as well as goals. So hopefully he does well there for us. Great chance for Arneson. Comes off the upright. That would have been some goal. Skriniar clears it. Still one all after 65 minutes. And I think we might make another substitution at this time. Elias Anderson only on a 6.5 at the backs. We'll try out Ali Ramadan there alongside Thiago Polo for the last 24 minutes. And up to the 72 minute mark now. I think we are going to make our last substitution. We've got a few wingers on red hearts here. But the player... I think we might take off here is Karel Giroud only going okay on a 6.8. Nicolucci Kiviglia to come on for him to see if we can break through here in these last 20 minutes. And with 10 minutes left, it is a goal kick here to Inter Milan. A very quiet game this one so far, unfortunately. We kind of gifted that chance which Inter took to get them an equalizing goal in this one. Here's a chance from a tight angle. Frederick Larson. there's a tackle. It has been called an on-field penalty. We'll just wait and see about this one it did look fairly clean that tackle I fought there by Danilo but you never know there was a funny one yesterday against Parazan which did get awarded and this would be a very nice one to get awarded as compared to that one in a game which we really did have well under control in that one in particular but this time the referee does side on VAR's side that is no penalty still one all here with about eight minutes left and we are into injury time in this game unfortunately not much action we couldn't quite break through in that second half, unfortunately, that goal, which we kind of did gift to them late in the first half, just after we did grab the goal, which put us in the lead there through Nicholas Zimmerman. That means we are going to end up with a one-all draw here at home. By no means a terrible result, but that certainly could have been a lot better, very similar to the away leg that we did have in yesterday's episode. But a good performance, probably should have won that one. But in the end, we only come away with a draw. Leipzig and Palazan must have a late kickoff today so we'll come back shortly check on the result of that one and also check in on HK before we do get into the end of season review and here we are about to get into the end of season review but just wrapping up what the group does look like at the end of today's episode Leipzig did pick up a 2-0 win this time they kept all their players on the park there against Palazan picking up a 2-0 win that sees them go top of the group on nine points we are now three points behind Inter but one point ahead of Palazan in that Europa League knockout spot going into those last two games of the group stages. In tomorrow's episode, they will be at home to RB Leipzig. We know we can beat those guys from last season, even though the first game this time around did not go to plan. Off the back of that, we travel away to take on Parazan, who are a team who we have beaten every single time. We have played them so far in the safes. So we certainly have a sneaky chance there of picking up six points in tomorrow's episode. Would be interesting to see what that would do to the table I think ideally in terms of the build nation side of this challenge I think Europa League knockouts as shown last season might be the most appropriate competition for us for the start of 2031 but we are still in a position where we could finish anywhere from bottom to top of the group going into those last two games in tomorrow's episode and while we are here we'll also have a quick check in on how HK are getting on in group C albeit it's not going too well for them. They had an away trip to Bayern Munich just before we did play that game there against Inter Milan. They lost 3-0 away from home. So they are still yet to pick up a point in the group stages. They will need a bit of a miracle in their last few if they are going to reach the knockouts of the Europa League or just get anything out of that group at all. But we're in a decent position. HK in a bit of trouble, it is fair to say, with two games left to go in the group stages of the Champions League but we are about to get into the end of season review we'll actually work our way up to it this time I think we start off with the Islands deal in review we were the champions top assists actually went to Patrick Nygaard with nine assists and the highest average rating Benjamin Rubio 
with an 8.04. So those are the top statistical players from the domestic league season. In terms of signings of the season, it did go to the top goal scorer there for HKM Burnson. We do have Kalen Rakasan as a runner-up there on the top signings. He was great for us, albeit didn't play all that many times in the domestic league this season, but he was certainly very good with four goals and five assists in his eight appearances. No doubt that transfer fee is probably what handicaps our chances of getting someone to get that signing of the season award there. In one of these saves, we did finish the season unbeaten, albeit slightly disappointingly because the last game of the season we did draw, but apart from that, we did win all of our prior 21 games. Kalen Rakasan, very happy with that one, and we'll get to the best 11 off the back of this season review, which we will get stuck into now, picking up the domestic quadruple yet again. The new arrival signing of the season was Kalen Rakasan, 19 appearances, 16 goals, 16 assists. He is a great option as that Mazala on attack for us, 3.9 million. I think it's fair to say that was well spent. Just in behind that, Elias Anderson had a solid first season here at the club as our new starting centre back after splashing 7.75 million. On him, we did make a free transfer of Soren Thomasan. We haven't given him much game time yet, though. He did get an assist in a game, though, late in the season, so he shows some encouraging signs there. Does the young Danish left winger Karel Giroud was one of our other big money signings in this past season. The box box midfielder we did get out of the Czech Republic. 25 appearances, one goal and six assists. A solid rating for him in his first season at the club. And the same can be said for both Andy Harwood who was just playing back up left back there to Alejandro Meza, 1.2 million we signed him for from Malmo. And also we gave John Nutter a few appearances late in the season. He's a player. I hope to get involved in the Champions League squad come the start of qualifying next season because I think by then we might be able to get rid of someone like Melsi Martins as Fabio Mariano will have to be registered and will also be homegrown at club and in nation. So that will give us a chance to replace someone like Melsi Martins with Joe Nata instead, but he was good for us in a few appearances. We only spent 1.5 million up front on the very promising young Brazilian striker slash winger who can play on both sides. Lots of transfers out. Most of these were rated quite well. Milos Petrovic, not quite as much because we did make a loss on that transfer. Jasandro not rated too highly, but we do have a percentage of next sale clause in that one, so that will certainly help out for a player we did pick up on a free transfer, and the same applies for quite a few of these guys down there. Rosario Renzi aboard, quite happy with that transfer, despite the fact we did make a loss on that one. Adri Garrido, we were not giving much game time to, and he goes for £325,000 after we picked him up on a free transfer as well. And Gabriel Corbo, they actually don't like that transfer because they reckon we could go a bit more for the 30 year old centre back, but yet again, we certainly upgraded in that area with Elias Anderson, and I don't think we were going to be able to make too much of a profit there on a 30-year-old centre-back, but those are the players that we did get rid of in this past season. Lots of fringe players who really weren't going to get much game time this season with the additions that we had made over recent years, and a lot of loans out, especially out to HK, and those players have done a decent job, albeit doesn't look like they're doing quite as well in the Champions League, albeit they have got a very, very tough group forward to this season's results these are going to be largely good as I said just that draw on the last day of the season but apart from that we did pick up 21 wins from our prior games in the league picking up 21 wins out of 22 just that last draw a little bit frustrating we didn't quite get the perfect season but we do go through unbeaten winning the league very comfortably HK and both of the Nats clubs are going to be in conference league qualifying next season that might be something HK can really do some damage in for the Builder Nation side of this challenge. And it is Huff Nafkador and Shanam both going down. That was the case for most of the season. They were never really out of that relegation zone and they will go down to the one deal. In terms of the Champions League, of course, we did make the first knockout round last season. The board quite happy with that. But unfortunately, we came up against a far too classy Bayern Munich out. But this time, currently in third in the group, maybe dropping down to the knockouts of the Europa League would suit us a little bit more as shown a few seasons ago because when we were last in that competition we did make the final against Liverpool the Molka Bicker and we did pick up with fairly comfortable wins all the way through this competition beating HK 4-0 in the final the Super Cup we did beat HK in as well that was right at the start of the season by a big scoreline there 
of 8-2-1 and the Deal de Bacar again got through this reasonably comfortably beating Akronis 6-0 in the final of that competition, albeit that was off the back of a little bit of a scratchy semi-final where we did only beat Phil Kier by two goals to nil, but we did pick up the domestic quadruple and also made the Champions League knockouts for the first time in this save in this past season. So probably on that basis, one of our most successful ones in this save so far, even if it didn't help the build nation side of this challenge quite as much as the previous season where we did make the final of that Europa League did the moments to remember the biggest win that 8-1 win in the Super Cup there against HK of course when we did take on HK this past season all those players that we did loan to them were unavailable to play against us that's probably why a lot of those games were quite lopsided the match to remember apparently a 7-0 win against Keflavik in the domestic league back in May and the goal of the season was not that one a few episodes ago from Chaka Traore but it was by Rosario Renzi now of Hellas Verona against Fran Rakovic in the deal to Bacar. It was the opening goal in this one. Fran Rakovic did pick up a red card in this one, although from memory, I think it did come quite late on. But that is actually quite a similar goal to the one that Chaka Traore did score in Champions League qualifying, I think it was, a few episodes ago. That one didn't quite find its way into the top corner, but nonetheless still a very good goal. Rosario Renzi there picking up our goal of the season for 2030 here. At Volsinger, in terms of the finances, sponsorship and broadcast revenue both went up fairly considerably, but everything else was actually down. That's a little bit surprising. I thought we actually did better out of making the knockouts of the Champions League than we did for our only Europa League last season. Obviously, that was not the case, so we certainly maybe should be aiming to make the knockouts of the Europa League in tomorrow's episode if we can, albeit not too sure how you exactly throw games in Football Manager, but we are still in a position where we could still finish last in our group as well. So not too sure if we're really in a position where we can try and manipulate where we do finish in the group. In those last two games, we go forward to how we lined up. We'll actually probably get to that soon because that screen does seem to glitch out quite regularly. And now forward to the club awards, the fans player of the season, as well as young player of the season at 24 years old. That does seem quite old for a young player of the season. But nonetheless, Thiago Polo picked up both of those awards, and as we ran through before, signing of the season, Rakasan, goal of the season, Rosario Renzi, the top goal scorer, was Benjamin Rubio this season, with 24 goals, the most assists, Rakasan, 16 to go alongside those 16 goals, that he scored the most player of the matches, did go to Rakasan, as you would expect, with those well-balanced stats, with six player of the matches, the highest average rating, Chaka Traore, and the most passes per 90, was Brynja Galtason, in terms of competition awards, however, it was a clean sweep to Fabio Mariano. He picks up both the top division player of the season as well as the young player of the season. So Paolo and Mariano, the big award winners in this past season here domestically. In terms of record breakers, most goals by a player in a league match, Benjamin Rubio picked up four and also a few records in terms of transfer fees here at Volsung or the highest fee paid for a player for that transfer for Elias Anderson and also the record that we did have from Chelsea for Sergio Cadena in terms of a fee received that was broken in that deal with Hellas Verona for Rosario Renzi. We did not pick up a managerial award. Not too sure what more we could have done in this past year to be fair, but I think the manager of Nats was the guy who did end up getting the manager of the season despite the fact that we did not lose a single game domestically throughout the entire season, only dropping points. In one of those, but we'll make our way over now to check out the best 11 from this past season. And here it is, it does look very similar to our first choice 11 that we did run for most of this past season, especially once we did get knocked out of the Champions League knockouts early doors. Will Lurvik in goal, Matthews and Polo at the back. Ramadan was more of a backup centre back for us once Elias Anderson did arrive at the club, but he is in there alongside Andy Howard, Alejandro Meza. Needs to step his game up. Otherwise, maybe we bring in someone like Kenny Boreal, like we did look to do late in the transfer window before Alejandro Meza did take too long to decide whether he wanted to go to Napoli or not. That's something we may look to do at the start of this upcoming transfer window, albeit not quite as much funds that we do have here for this upcoming season, around about the £13 million mark. In terms of the midfield, Guy and Rakasan both good, and Caviglia actually got there over Corral Giroux in the box to box midfield role. So Caviglia is still offering a lot for us at the ripe old age of 30 years old. And in terms of the front three, the backup wingers are the ones who have got into our best 11. Nygaard 
and Trey Ore, but Benjamin Rubio for the first time in the save gets his way into the best 11 for a season, I believe. So finally, that's a well overdue honour there for Benjamin Rubio and our bench is our backup goalkeeper, Thomas Diaz, Gaetano de Prisco, and Elias Anderson, both centre backs, make their way onto the bench, as do both of our first choice wingers there, and Frederick Larson and Nicholas Zimmerman, as well as Corral Giroux, and of course, Fabio Mariano off the back of picking up those awards in the top division. And we go back to the inbox now to check in on what our overall best 11 does look like these days. And there are two new additions to this squad, both Chaka Traore and Thiago Polo make their way into the best 11, albeit neither of those players are actually in the starting lineup. So I don't think there's been any change from last season at all in terms of the starting 11 for our best 11 overall in the save so far. But we've certainly got a few more current players who shouldn't be too far away from getting into the starting positions, especially, I still would say, Benjamin Rubio. He's not far off becoming the club's leading goal scorer now. He's only about five goals away from taking that on us. You'd like to think once that happens, he will get in there over João Pedro, who actually isn't even the player who holds that honour. I believe it is support or Gerson from very early on in this save, but I'd like to think of those players on the bench. Benjamin Rubio, probably the next one who's going to force his way into the staying 11 of this overall best 11. And just having a quick look at where some of these players are now. I think we've covered off quite a few of these players in the past few seasons where we have done our end of season review, of course, Sergio Cadena still at Chelsea, still not getting a lot of game time, so not too sure if he's getting much out of that transfer that we did make a few seasons ago. Mbiyamba, of course, only left us recently. He these days at Fortuna Dusseldorf, just having a quick look at how his first few seasons have gone there. Not quite performing as well as he did here, but obviously that is in a much stronger league. In the Bundesliga, we've still got Michelle Serafellini at Brighton and Hove Albion, he's been going okay as a backup goalkeeper, albeit not getting too many appearances for those guys, albeit his only appearance this season. He actually did do quite well in picking up a clean sheet, making our way through this a little bit more. Leandro Diaz, still at Udinese Calcio, he's been going decently since we did let him go, albeit he has been bouncing around clubs quite a bit on loan. Gabriel Corbo, of course, we let him go to Ustende his first season there. He hasn't got much game time at all, so I'm not too sure if he could have done much better with that transfer because his value, no doubt, will continue to be plummeting with that lack of game time there. In Belgium, and Richmond Badu is still at the club that he was previously at, I do believe, and he hasn't been getting much game time of late either. So quite a few of those players in our best 11 who did leave us, not getting too much game time these days. Yao Pedro, he is now at Burco in Portugal, I believe. He's been doing okay for those guys, but certainly not producing the sort of form he was producing when he was with us here. At Volsinger, Kurt Shaw is at Keflavik, of course. We've been able to keep a bit of an eye out on him. He's still performing really well, leaving us on a free transfer, staying within Iceland. He's been doing nice and solidly still in the domestic league. And Ledton is back in Brazil, not valued at much, 27 years old, albeit is performing quite well there in the lower divisions of Brazil. So that's how some of our players from our overall best 11 are getting on these days. We have a quick look back at the side of 2021 as well. Apparently our golden generation. I think it's fair to say that's more some players that we do have at the moment. Adolf Bidegeko. I remember someone in the comments mentioning that he was his mate. So we'll just give a brief update here on Adolf Bidegeko. I think he is back in Tanzania playing for the Kagura Sugar and just having a look at how he's got on since leaving us here at Volsinger, he has bounced around both Iceland and Tanzania. He's actually been performing fairly well when you look at his average rating, but the big issue with him when we had him the first season or so of the save is that he did not want to renew his contract with us. So that was the reason that we did let Adolf Bergeko go, despite the fact that in the first season of the save, he was quite clearly the best player that we did have when we did take over this team. Having a quick look at some of the other players from that side of 2021, Alvar Boldvinson. These days, he is 33 years old at one of the lower division clubs here in Iceland. He was decent for us back when we did take over, getting a 6.74 in that first season, which we did use him in the save. Bjarki Baldesson, that is a much more familiar name. He was a great rock at the back for us for a few seasons. He is, again, at one of the lower division clubs here 
in Iceland, still performing decently, especially this past season, but not at the same level as we have got to these days. In this save, and a few more players, of course, ride us on, who was the player who is a bit of a head of a baby, the former striker come winger. He's been doing okay since leaving us, staying in the lower divisions of Iceland. The same can be said for players like Esgir Chris Janssson. He is with Vidir. He's been doing okay, not getting a lot of game time. In fact, getting no game time as of late. So he's not been doing too much since we did let go of him in 2022. And of course, the record goal scorer here at the club, support Old Gerson. He as well is in the lower divisions of Iceland, albeit getting a lot more game time than that past player did and is performing quite well over the past few seasons. And all those players in that bottom paragraph, I believe, will be either free agents or retired these days. We'll just have a quick look at some of them. And indeed, that is the case. There's one of the channel subscribers, Anapami Chris Janssen. Unfortunately, hasn't been picked up by a club at the moment. He was good for us. He was quite useful early days in the Champions League as well when we did need to have some homegrown club players. Recent form in game though, judging by those average ratings, has just been dropping off ever so slightly though, on the likes of Spasic, Bakary, and the rest of those players in that last paragraph are also free agents these days. But I think that will do it for today's episode, picking up a draw at home against Inter Milan, yet again a game which we probably should have got a little bit more out of, but it does leave us food going in to tomorrow's episode and also doing our end of season review if you did enjoy today's episode then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated tomorrow we will come back and wrap up the rest of the group stage of the champions league of course that is going to be in the new season so we need to go back to the group stage screen we are taking on rb leipzig at home partisan away I think we could actually end up with six points from those games albeit we might not actually want all six points from those games because as I said I think we might be better off entering the knockouts of the Europa League based on what did happen to us last season but that's what's coming up tomorrow we'll finish off the group stages of the Champions League see where we do end up and do the draw for the first knockout round of whichever competition that we do end up in as long as partisan don't overtake us, but until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.